terminology of Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. John 10 and 30 says, I and my Father are one. John 14, 16, and 17 says, I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, even the Spirit of truth. Father, Holy Ghost, and Sonship. Do these terms identify three different persons or personalities in the Godhead? Or do they indicate three different roles, modes, functions, or offices through which the one God operates and reveals himself? Terminology of the Father. The phrase God the Father is biblical and refers to God himself. Galatians 1, 1 through 4. For we know God is the Father and the title Father indicates a relation between God and humans, between, particularly between God and His Son, and between God and regenerated humans. The Spirit that dwelt in the Son of God was none other than the Father. It is important to note that the name of the Father is Jesus, for His name fully reveals and expresses the Father in John 5:43. He fulfilled Old Testament prophecy that stated the Messiah would declare the name of the Lord. Psalm 22, 22, Hebrews 2 and 12. Wow. The terminology of the Son. Basically, the term Son of God refers to God as manifest in flesh in the person of Jesus Christ. For the salvation of man in the name of the Son is Jesus. And we went through that in the last chapter. The Holy Ghost. The terms Holy Ghost and Holy Spirit are interchangeable meaning identically the same. Some people like using the word Holy Ghost, and some people uh, like using the terminology. Hello, Samantha. Hello. <laughs> uh, we're just looking, I'm going to continue on because I'm uh, with the camera here this morning. These two terms, uh, the terms Holy Ghost and Holy Spirit in chain, and they're used, you mean the same thing. They come from the Greek word pneuma, therefore there's absolutely no distinction between the terms, and either is perfectly acceptable since both mean, both mean the same. Samantha, you'll have to watch the first part of the video to get the first part of what we did, okay? Okay. The Holy Spirit is simply God, and God is holy. And we're looking at the, uh, chapter 6. We cannot limit the terms Holy Ghost or Holy Spirit or Spirit of God to the New Testament because it's referred to even in the Old Testament. The Father is the Holy Ghost. The one God is Father of all who is holy and is a spirit. Therefore, the titles Father and Holy Spirit, spirit describe the same being. When we are filled with the Holy Ghost, are we filled with all the Spirit of God? No. Because none of us contain can contain the whole Spirit of God. Because God is what? Everywhere is present and nowhere is absent. And none of us are everywhere is present or nowhere is absent. We, we're, we're specifically regulated to a certain time and place. The deity resident in Jesus Christ is none other than the Father. In other words, the Spirit in the Son is the Father. Jesus is the Father incarnate. In short, the Spirit that is resident in Jesus Christ is none other than the Holy Spirit. The Spirit is the Son and is the Holy Spirit. We know this according to scriptures. When you read through your book, you'll see all kinds of information, but due to time, we can't go and read all the scriptures in relationship to this. It is clear that the terms Father, Son, and Holy Ghost cannot imply three different pers personality wills or beings, they can only denote different aspects or roles of one spirit being the, the one God. In other words, when they are titles, and as the we say it, He is the Father in creation, the Son in redemption, the Holy Ghost or Holy Spirit in regeneration. And so He, he, he is the same, but it's a different role that He's participating. So these terminology are different roles of the one God. Uh, what of passages of scripture that seem to describe more than one person the Godhead? <laughs> wow. When a person strips his mind of all man-made interpretations, connotations, and doctrines, viewing these verses through the eyes of the original who were developed by the they will understand these verses describe either the multiple attributes and roles of God or the dual nature of Jesus Christ, which is what we dealt with at the beginning of this class, that dual nature. 
when you understand the real who Jesus Christ was that he had that dual nature then these scriptures are not confusing they are clear only two verses of scripture in the entire Bible mention Father, Son, or Word and Holy Ghost in a way that would suggest three persons or a special significance of the number three in relation to God. They are Matthew 28, 19 and John 5 and 7. Now, let's look at Matthew 28, 19. In this passage, Jesus commanded his disciples to baptize in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. It does not teach the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost are three separate persons, rather that these are the titles of one person. And we know that those titles refer to one person who is Jesus. All describe God so that the phrase in Matthew 20 simply describes the one name of the one God. Some claim that the reference in Acts do not really mean that the name of Jesus was already uttered as part of a baptismal formula. And when you go throughout the uh, Acts, you will read that they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus or the name of the Lord and so forth. And to us, we know that that name is Jesus. Because the Bible says there is no other name given among men whereby we must be saved but at the name of Jesus. There is power in that name. There is healing in that name. There is salvation in that name. Uh... We should remember the water baptism is administered because of our past life sin is for the remission of sins. And it's funny, there's only one thing that can remit sin. What is it, Samantha? The blood. The blood. So when we call upon that name in baptism, then the blood is what? Applied to our lives and our sins are washed away. And so that's why we know that 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 there can be no remission of sins unless the blood is applied. And it is when you call on the name of Jesus. It does not mean that there's three persons. John 5 and 7. Although the verse of scripture is often used by those who believe in three persons of God, it actually refutes this view for it says that these three are one. It is also interesting to note that the verse does not use the word son but word. If son were the special name of a distinct person of God, and if this verse were trying to teach a distinct person, why did he use word instead of son? Son does not refer, refer primarily to deity, but word does. God has recorded himself in three modes of activity or has revealed himself in three ways. That does not limit God to three manifestations, and we know that because we've read it throughout Scripture. But these are the three roles that God uses. We cannot combine God to just these three roles. Neither can we divide Him. But we know that He is one. However, we can address God in a way that describes everything He is. That includes the many roles and attributes of God. And we could use simply this term, God, or their Old Testament name, Jehovah. But we know the name to us that was revealed by the angel to Mary is Jesus, which Jehovah means, Jesus means, Jehoshua means salvation. That is what we are saying when we call upon that name. We are recognizing that He is our salvation and only through Him can we find that salvation. When Moses told him to place the blood on the lintel and on the doorpost and that death angel came by, when it saw the blood, he passed over. When God sees the blood of Jesus Christ or the Son of God, applied to our life, that's when the death angel will pass over. I'm not talking about a death of this physical body. I'm talking about that spiritual death. That's why we plead the blood over our lives daily. That's why we need to spend time with the Lord Jesus in the morning as soon as we wake up. And I, and I don't care. Oh, I do care, but I mean, 
you need to at least have some semblance of prayer asking that God cover you with his blood, place his hand of protection on you, watch over you, keep you during the day, help you. And somewhere in the morning you need to speak those words to him. The Bible speaks of Father, Son, and Holy Ghost as different manifestations, roles, modes, titles, attributes, relationships to humanity, or functions of the one God, but it is not referred to Father, Son, and Holy Ghost as three persons, personalities, wills, minds, or gods. God is the Father of us all, and in a unique way, unique way the Father of the man, Jesus Christ. God manifested himself in flesh, in the person of Jesus Christ called the Son of God. God is also called the Holy Spirit, which emphasizes his activity in the lives and affairs of humanity. God is not limited to these three manifestations. However, in the glorious revelation of the one God, the New Testament does not deviate from the strict monotheism of the Old Testament. Rather, the Bible presents Jesus as the revelation of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Jesus is not just manifested in one of these three persons in the God, but he is incarnation of the Father, the Jehovah of the Old Testament. Truly in Jesus dwells all the fullness of the God bodily. And we know that says that in Colossians 2, 9. Again, I will end with this. He is the Father in creation, the Son in redemption, and the Holy Ghost in regeneration. But he is only one God. There is not three persons which still talking about that one God. There is no other name. And I am so glad that I know who Jesus is. Not just a story as the song goes, but he is the king of glory. He is the one who came and gave himself willingly for me. And I am so glad that I know him. Uh, any questions today? I know. I don't... Yeah, I do. One of the um, like the biggest questions that Trinitarians will ask is, um, when Jesus was baptized and like there was a voice in heaven and then there was a dove. Yeah. How do you like how how explain that in simpler terms that they will understand without having to go into so much detail? Well, basically, I would say that when do it, what was the purpose of the dove? I don't know what the dove signifies. It's, well, it's a spirit, but I don't know how what it signifies. Like, the dove <laughs> was for those who were there. Mm -hmm. So they recognized who he was. The voice is because God is everywhere is present. Nowhere is absent. And when he revealed himself in the sonship, he did, what did he say when he told John? We do this to fulfill all righteousness. It was a cleansing ritual. Mm -hmm. And so Jesus wanted, even though John said to him, I need to be baptized of you. Was he referring to being baptized in water by Jesus? No, because he had already made the statement that the one who cometh after me baptized not with water, but with the Holy Ghost and with fire. So why would he need to be baptized of Jesus? It wasn't. It was referring to the spiritual baptism that Jesus Christ was going to give. If that was the case, that there was a separation, then why did he say that? Why did John say that? But the, the, the shape, and then notice it says the form of a dove. We say it's a dove, but it's not. It's, it's, the, only, it's the only thing they could use that could describe what they saw. So it was for the people to recognize who he was. The spirit is not always in the form of a dove. We always think in, in the terminology of a dove that, that it is uh, peace, it is beautiful, it's loving, it's soft, it's righteous. And then we always think that and we always portray it as a white dove. But that was just, it was the nearest thing they could get to, to saying what it was. But... In, when, when they start talking about that, why, here's the question, why did Jesus have to fulfill all righteousness? Because he needed to be perfect to be the sacrifice. Because he was still human. 
I said that side of him. And that's what he was referring to John. He, it was the human aspect of his life that he was fulfilling. Not the spiritual, because God, as a spirit, is perfect in all ways. He did not, he didn't have to. As a spirit, he did not have to, but as a human, he had to fulfill it. And as God, because God is, what, nowhere is absent and everywhere is present. When he spoke, he said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. All these, all the terminology that's used, and the same thing there, when they talk about that, when you understand, and if you, once you watch the first part of the video that we just did here now, we talked about the dual nature. And when you see that, that, and go through that part, you will understand this whole concept of what you're asking about. It was that human side that fulfilled the righteousness, not God, because God is righteous, God is perfect, God is holy, God is true. Okay? But as a human, he had to fulfill the righteousness that was required. Jesus said this one statement, I came not to destroy the law, but to fulfill it. So every action that he did was in fulfillment of the law that was given to Moses by God. And he fulfilled all points and all aspects of it. So that's why he's saying that in John. So to say that the, the dove or the Holy Ghost is a separate, it's not. It was only there for the people to recognize that the anointing was on Jesus Christ. Because it's from that point on, what, what does it say? From that point on, a lot of them left John and began to what? Follow Jesus. Right. Yeah. Because they knew from what they saw that this was the one they needed to follow. And that's why John said, I must decrease, and he is going to increase. Okay? So, uh, like I said, watch the first half that you missed. You overslept a little bit. <laughs> No, I've got the, the, the things confused. Oh, yeah. You're thinking it's next week? No, that was last month. I thought it was the next week. Oh, yeah. yeah. I know I, this morning I was a little confused myself. I said, honey, are you sure? Maybe it's not. It's the next week. And she said, no, there's no 31st. <laughs> all right, we'll see you in January. Yeah. All right. I'll send you all of the essays that I need to do yeah. in December. Okay.